The latest iPhone models come with multiple lenses at the back of your iPhone. For example, this iPhone 11 Pro has three different lenses. It has the standard wide-angle lens, which is the 1x. It has an ultra-wide-angle lens, or 0.5x. And it also has a telephoto lens, which is the 2x view. Now, depending on which iPhone model you have, you might not have three lenses. In fact, you might only have two or one lens, and that's okay. For years, when I started doing iPhone photography, all I had was just one lens. And during these years, I was able to take some really, really special photos with that one lens. So if you only have one lens on your iPhone, it is going to give you fewer creative options than having multiple lenses would give you, but you can still do really great photography with just one lens. But if you have more than one lens, then how do you choose which lens to use? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So I'm gonna show you exactly how the different lenses of your iPhone affect your photos, and I'll also give you some tips for when to use each one of these lenses. So let's start by opening the camera app. And by default, it opens on the 1x view. And that means that I'm now using my 1x, my wide angle lens. Now, if I want to get closer, let's say I'm interested in framing that church in the background, I can tap on two, and now I'm in my 2x view, and you can see how much closer I am to the church. On the other hand, if I want to get further away, I can tap my finger on the 0.5 icon, and now I'm at my 0.5x, my ultra wide angle lens, and you can see how much further away I am from the church. Now there's another thing you can do here when you're switching lenses. So if I tap and hold my finger on the 0.5x, you'll see this dial appear. And now I can choose various levels of zoom. So let's say I pick 1.5x. So now I'm kind of zoomed in, but I'm not quite at my 2x. I'm between my 1x and my 2x lenses. So that way you can actually get any level of zoom that you want on your iPhone camera. However, there is one problem. My iPhone only has three lenses, 0.5x, 1x, and 2x. And if I select any other le zoom level, I'm going to be zooming in digitally, which essentially means that I'll be cropping the image. So at 1.5x, I might get the zoom level I'm looking for, but I'm gonna get a significantly worse picture quality. For this reason, I don't recommend that you use these zoom function too much. Instead, just stick to the built-in lenses of your iPhone which for this specific model is 0.5x, 1x, and 2x. So now you know how to switch between the different lenses, but when should you use each one of them? And is it just a matter of getting closer? Well, it turns out that it's actually a lot more complicated because which lens you select greatly affects how objects appear in your photo. Specifically, by choosing a different lens, you can change the relationship between the foreground and the background of your image. Now, this sounds quite complicated, and the easiest thing I can do is simply show you what happens if you take the same photo using three different lenses. I'm gonna start by switching to my 0.5x. And using my 0.5x lens, I wanna frame the shot where I have the church in the background, and also on the right-hand side, I have this building. And I wanna frame the shot in such a way where the full building is clearly seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture. So this photo is shot using my 0.5x. Now I'm gonna take a few steps back and I'm gonna switch to my 1x view and I'll show you what that looks like in this scene. Okay, so now I've taken a few steps back and if I frame up the exact same shot, you'll see that on the right hand side, the building is still the exact same size. So it's just as big as it was in my previous shot. But now I took a few steps back and I've switched to my 1x lens. And you're going to notice that on the left hand side, we once again have the church, but this time the church is already bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this photo as well. And now, for the sake of demonstration, I'll head back even more and show you what this looks like using the 2x lens. So now, if I once again frame up the same shot, you're gonna immediately see how much bigger the church is. Now, this time I have to be a little bit more careful with how I frame this 
because I also have this pole on the right hand side. So I don't want to include that in a photo. It's a distraction and if I can remove a distraction, it's always better to do so. So I'm going to carefully frame the shot and I'll go ahead and take a picture. And now if we compare the three photos we just took side by side, you'll see that using the 0.5x lens, the ultra wide, the church in the background is really, really tiny. You can barely even see it. At 1x, the church is already a little bit bigger, but it's still quite small. But when I switch to 2x, you'll see that the church is now really big and it's an important part of my composition. And obviously, I like how the church looks in the frame. So the 2x photo is my favorite one here. So what I just showed you is called compression. And essentially what it means is that as you go to a tighter and tighter focal length, in other words, as you go from your 0.5x to your 1x to your 2x telephoto lens, what happens is that the background of your photo starts to become closer and closer. In other words, if you're using the telephoto view, the 2x view, you'll be literally taking the background that's far away and you'll be bringing it closer to you. So in other words, you're compressing the scene. You're making it appear as if different objects are closer to each other than they actually are. On the other hand, if you're using the ultra-wide view, the 0.5x, you're actually stretching the scene out. In other words, you are going to create a photo where the background is really, really, really far away from the foreground. And that's why in that 0.5x, the church in the background is so small. Now, what I just showed you is really, really powerful. These three photos were so different from each other, it's almost hard to believe. Also, it's kind of not intuitive because the human eye doesn't work like this. You don't have different lenses in your eyes, so you cannot really see anything like this with your eyes. But when you're taking photos with the iPhone, if you have more than one lens, then you do have this type of control over your images. So the next time you're taking a photo, don't just think about, do I need to get closer or further away? That's not how you should be choosing the right lens. Instead, you want to think about how you want to show the photo and what kind of relationship do you want to have between your background and the foreground. Do you want the background to be prominent like we wanted in this case? If so, go for the 2x, the telephoto view, and that is going to bring the background closer to you. It's going to compress the scene. It's going to create a kind of photo where everything appears closer to each other. And in a situation like this, where we have a church tower far away, that we want to include in our composition, the 2x lens is the way to go. Or what if you want a different kind of shot? What if you want a photo where the foreground is really prominent, but the background is far away and it doesn't stand out so much? Well, in that case, you want to use one of the wide angle lens options. So either the 1x or 0.5x. And when you use these lenses, the background is going to be so much smaller and it's not going to stand out so much in your photo. So depending on which lens you choose, you'll get a dramatically different photo and it is a creative decision you want to make every time you're taking a shot. So far, we've talked about how the lens you choose will affect the perspective in your photos. We talked about how, depending on which lens you choose, you can dramatically alter the relationship between your background and your foreground. But there are a few more things you should pay attention to when you're deciding which lens to use. So that's what we're gonna talk about next. So your wide angle, your 1x view, is the default lens. And it's also probably the lens you'll be using most often. This is a great lens for all sorts of photography, especially things like landscapes and architecture. It is still a wide angle lens though, and if you're going to be shooting portraits, you might get a slightly distorted look on the face of your subject, especially if you get closer to them. So because of that, your 1x, your wide angle lens, is actually not a great choice for portrait photography. It is, however, a great choice for night photography and for low light, because this lens actually performs better than the other two lenses when the light is limited. Now your 2x, your telephoto lens, is probably the second most useful lens on the back of the iPhone. And I happen to be shooting in 2x all the time. And there are a lot of reasons to shoot 2x. For example, the photo we just took with the church in the background, it wouldn't be the same if we didn't have that 2x, if we couldn't compress the scene together to bring that background closer. And it turns out there are a lot of situations like that. And it's not just street scenes or, or architecture like we're shooting now. The same tends to happen a lot in landscape photography especially if you have mountains in the background, and if you want to bring those mountains closer and make them appear larger. 
Also, the 2x lens is great whenever you just need to physically get closer. For example, if you're taking photos of close-up details, or if you're doing street photography and you don't want to be noticed when you're taking photos of strangers. And finally, 2x is the lens of choice for portrait photography because that 2x is actually a more natural perspective than the 1x, the wide angle view. And when you're taking photos using the 2x lens, you're gonna get a more natural, more pleasing looking portrait photos. And finally, the 0.5x lens is probably your most creative lens. The chances are you won't be using it as much as the other two lenses, but it is nevertheless a great tool for showing the kind of photos that you wouldn't be able to capture otherwise. With this lens, you can really get a lot in the frame, so it can be useful for landscapes, but this lens tends to really shine when you're shooting architecture indoors. So if you wanna take a photo of your apartment and if you wanna list it for sale, then 0.5x is the lens you wanna use because using this lens, everything is going to appear so much bigger. So if you have a small apartment, but if you take a shot using the 0.5x lens, it's going to appear so much bigger. And that's what real estate agents do all the time. But it's not just real estate where you can use the 0.5x lens. There are definitely other situations, but I have to say it's not as common or not as useful to use the 0.5x lens as it is to use the other two. So if you're in the market for a new iPhone, definitely make sure that you have the 2x telephoto lens. It is a real game changer in photography and we'll be using it a lot throughout this course. Now, if you don't have the 2x lens, that's okay for now, but the next time you're buying a new iPhone, make sure you get one that has the 2x lens. Okay, so now you know what to think about when you're choosing which lens to take photos with. Of course, there's no reason for you to take just one photo. It's perfectly okay to take more than one photo using the different lenses. And in fact, I recommend that you do exactly that. And that way you'll get more variety. You'll get more different shots with different perspective. But the most important thing for you to understand right now is that the lens choice doesn't just affect how close or how far away you are from your subject. It also dramatically changes the perspective in your photos by altering the relationship between your background and your foreground. And that is the most critical thing to understand right now. I suggest that you practice this yourself. Perhaps go outside and find a similar photo example where you're going to keep the foreground in the same size and then you can alter how big the background of your image is going to appear. Just remember, lens choice isn't an accident. It is a creative decision that you have to make every time you take a photo. And depending on which lens you choose, you're going to get a dramatically different result.